Um, good morning, a pleasure to be here. Um, I could hear when I was introduced uh, by Catherine um, some members of the crowd. Oh, that's what the jerk from OMB looks like. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I, uh, I am not an expert on, on, the, uh, on the panel here on, in terms of government and private sector uses of NLS, but I have had a, a long-running relationship with BLS and with, um, and with the uh, NLS, uh, NLSY, so uh, I, um, and I am in the 79 cohort as well. Um, <laughs> and so that's why I approved it every year. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, I, my perspective is, is actually similar to, to Mike Horrigan's um, in terms of uh, talking about a, uh, except kind of from a more broad view of the federal statistical system, um, but kind of talking about the uh, BLS was interested in having someone talk about future priorities and some things like that and a strategic plan for the future. Uh, so I was telling him that, that T and I uh, uh, kind of had some similar things that we were kind of coming at this from, from different perspectives. Uh, he was talking more in terms of a celebration. Uh, he's the glasses half full guy. I'm the glasses <laughs> half empty guy. Um, but we actually end up pretty close to the same place. Um, and then he told me that he had to go to a meeting at the White House and he wasn't going to be here for my talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he believes that I'm, we're going to end up at the same place. But um, uh, if you saw my third slide, um, it has three bullets on it that um, you have seen in many other presentations that could uh, I could give and, well, frankly have given um, at, at many other occasions to talk about the challenges for the future. Um, we have, uh, as has been noted here, um, uh, I think by Erica, uh, rising costs of data collection uh, across the federal statistical system, uh, declining cooperation from the public, uh, the NLS retention rate, uh, for example, of 80% for the, for the 1979 cohort is practically miraculous um, and is, is something that is uh, is just a, a great credit to, to BLS, to NORC, to Ohio State, to all of you, to the principal investigators, to everyone who works on this survey and, and uh, especially the field uh, force and, and the, um, the folks that, that, that do that. Um, but, uh, and, and communicating the uses of the information and, and the way that it, it has been used. Um, what we are seeing and uh, across, and, and BLS is no exception to this whatsoever, BLS is kind of the poster child for flat or declining budgets um, in uh, federal agencies. And uh, so one of the things that uh, Mike talked about doing this in terms of, well, what would the future look like unconstrained by budgets? Um, I'm saying what is the future going to look like with what we're looking at for budgets? Um, we've talked about for years now, uh, many of you have talked about for a long time a need for a new cohort. Um, we have the 97 cohort, we have the 79 cohort. Um, when's the next one coming? Uh, uh, it's, it's coming as soon as the projectors. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, as many of you uh, will recall, uh, there was a proposal in the president's budget in, in fiscal year 2012 to initiate a new cohort for the NLS. That was not funded. Uh, that was followed by uh, FY13 sequester in which BLS's budget was cut by about 30 million dollars um, and lots of things were put on, on life support. Um, as Erica noted and, and those of you who, who know BLS, uh, some of you know it very very well, um, there is no fat in this budget. Um, if there ever was, um, it, uh, there's, there's nothing left. Um, you know, people from the the budget office there go around uh, and, and check the, the couches every night for spare change to, to make sure that they can keep the lights on. Um, and, um, and many of the uh, other programs that the BLS has um, produce uh, principal federal economic indicators. Um, so one thing that, that is, NLS is really a rather unique survey, and I, I'm really preaching the choir here, but especially in terms of its uh, a role at BLS. Um, it is uh, a rather unique thing actually for the federal statistical system in terms of being one of the closest things we have to an omnibus survey uh, and an omnibus longitudinal survey um, here. Uh, but BLS is the primary funder and is responsible for the, for the NLS. They were, were quick to acknowledge their partners. Uh, some of those partners are far more equal than others. Um, and and I, I can be honest, 
um, BLS was, was being very, uh, they've had a lot of supporters, but um, as you've heard from others here, the funding situations at other agencies have, have drastically impacted what they've done. They had a lot of folks uh, contribute a little bit of money at the beginning and then fall away. Uh, without BLS providing the, the core funding of this, there would be no NLS. Uh, make no doubt about that. Um, they have had wonderful partnerships with, with NICHD, um, and that has, been a, that has been much more of a partnership. Others have been, as, as Howard was saying, you know, gee, we, this is really important to us. This is a, a great resource. Uh, we, we, want, we, we need to fund the space shuttle. Um, but there are, I have not been uh, folks who have, who have stepped up to do that. Um, and uh, in a lot of ways, this is a, a rather, again, you guys know this very well, um, is unusual in that this is funded by a contract vehicle by BLS. This is not a R01 grant, or this is not a, uh, there's principal investigators, several, many of them in the room here. Um, they're not principal investigators uh, for other BLS surveys um, outside of outside of BLS. Um, and uh, the primary users, as, as folks have referred to, are, are external researchers and this huge bibliography of, of folks. It's not uh, like the other BLS surveys. Um, in terms of content, you've heard that, that this is filled with sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Um, and uh, there is um, a, a, a wide variety of, of research topics that are here. And this is a huge strength um, the, in terms of the context here. Uh, it makes it a little uncomfortable for the person at OMB who's reviewing this and for the person uh, at BLS who has to answer the question when somebody says, why are you guys asking questions on this? Um, what is BLS going to do with this? And the answer is, well, Chuck used to say, BLS isn't exactly going to use this, but this is really important because um, it's, a, it's a basic uh, primary research vehicle. Um, and um, But the con many of these content areas are outside the expertise of, of the people in this building. Um, and uh, they are the areas of expertise of, of, of many folks can, uh, who were getting grants and working on this survey. Um, and, uh, but this is a very, um, there are huge benefits to this, as, as it has been pointing out, of having this platform um, and, this, and this rich data. But the question is, is this sustainable? And is this sustainable for BLS to, to be able to, to keep this thing going as all by itself uh, without more partners? Um, and this is something we face in a, that it's a really a struggle in a, a decentralized federal statistical system um, where we have all these different agencies with specific interests and subject matter expertise um, located elsewhere. Um, so there are lots of folks from education, from justice, uh, from health and human services and very specific parts of that um, and uh, who and DOD that can and do benefit from, from this survey but some of them have been free riding uh, on on this, um, and so we need to think about new models for funding and governing uh, such a, a, a survey if we want to make sure that this is surviving um, for whether it's the hundredth or even the sixtieth anniversary. Um, and this raises a lot of, of difficult issues in terms of um, this. It's it's not like we have good models for this elsewhere. Uh, it. Some, in some sense, the uh, problems become multiplied. Um, if BLS is funding is unstable, well, lots of agencies' funding is unstable. And so what happens when, if you have, say, six people all equally contributing to running the survey, and one of them says, eh, kind of tight this year, sorry, we can't do it. Um, well, does sample get cut? Uh, does content get cut? Uh, who makes decisions on content equally, or, or uh, who makes decisions on methodology? Gee, why don't we just all do a big internet panel? Um, and um, and the stakeholders, as you have seen here, change as the as the cohort ages. Um, who who becomes interested in who becomes interested, or who loses interest over time? Um, anyway, uh, so lest I uh, uh, completely depress you. Um, <laughs> I, I believe um, that there really is some great potential here um, for interagency collaboration. And uh, one slide I have that you can't see um, <laughs> talks about that uh, is, is thrown up to be provocative um, is uh, 
the high school longitudinal study of, of 2009, which is uh, sponsored and conducted by the National Center for Education Statistics. This is following a cohort of 25,000 ninth graders through high school, post-secondary, and early career experiences, focusing on college decision making. Uh, I hope you're following along. Um, <laughs> and math and learning. Um, and uh, they're gathering data from students, from administrators, from teachers, from parents, and from administrative records. Um, is anyone asking why this isn't the next cohort of DNLS? Why isn't this the basis? Why isn't there a partnership or a cooperative arrangement here to build upon this? Um, and uh, can't, isn't there great data there that, that people in this room would benefit from that may not actually have been thought of by some folks at, uh, at BLS to, to help uh, include here? Um, I'm not saying that there's a, a simple, easy answer, but there are opportunities out there, and it's not clear going forward whether the federal statistical system can afford to have everybody doing um, independent collections. Ooh, just in time. Thank you. You'll get more applause than I will, don't worry. Um, so, uh, and just to point out as well, this is a little bit, so the the, long, um, the uh, high school longitudinal survey has the most similarity in terms of, of when the LS cohorts are starting, but there are uh, NCES as well as some other agencies, like in National Center for Science and Engineering Statistics, also sponsor other longitudinal studies that, that uh, focus on other groups that could be of, of great interest and could be useful platforms to consider as well. Uh, to come back to the issue of, of administrative records, um, I just wanted to raise here at the end um, uh, a study that many of you are probably familiar with that is um, going on of course, at very, very early stages. I'll show you this. Here's the pretty figure I wanted you to see, which you probably didn't read. But, um, this is the brainchild of um, uh, Dave Brusky, Timothy Smith, and Matt Snip, um, and is looking at when they got to, uh, at a, from a National Academy of Sciences workshop of a year, a couple of years ago, uh, looked at trying to build a new uh, survey on social mobility, and concluded it wasn't feasible, um, but said, you know what, we have existing data. We actually have a panel out there that's not being recognized and utilized. If we build on existing data from decennial censuses, surveys, and administrative record sources, this is really an initiative to, to develop a capacity to link across these existing data and do so on an on-demand basis. So we're not creating this huge, massive database um, that's, that folks might be worried about. I'm not saying there aren't lots of issues, as Howard alluded to, um, but this is you know, a multi-phase kind of study and looking at both technical issues as well as um, ways that this could, could potentially work. Um, Data would reside and research take place in federal statistical research data centers to protect confidentiality. And there's some initial work going on in terms of data capture and, and linking techniques. Um, and the development of this is being overseen by a standing committee at the, the National Academies. One of the benefits, as Ken Howard was alluding to, is this becomes self-perpetuating once you can actually start link. So going forward, we can be linking censuses, we can be linking ACS data, we can be linking to uh, IRS tax records, uh, SSA, uh, information, um, SNAP uh, programs, other DOJ uh, rap sheets, um, and going uh, going forward, uh, if they are able to do some of the technical work in terms of linking, uh, in terms of uh, data capture uh, and linking, they can go backwards. And so this allows also intergenerational panels. So getting identifying families and children and being able to follow them up, and Will this replace the NLS? Why? Can you find out time of sex? Um, no, but this becomes a different platform by which you now have work histories from administrative data. You have earnings data. You have all kinds of other information. Uh, you have the full range of, you know, potentially ACS variables. This becomes a great platform for sampling, for following up, for having huge sample sizes, uh, being able to subsample specific groups, then being able to, to survey on a more limited basis some of those social, attitudinal, behavioral measures that you that aren't going to be captured um, in administrative data sources, but that, that you might find 
fascinating and useful for public policy for other basic research. Um, there's a lot of challenges to overcome here, um, but there, uh, I think the budget issues I think should motivate innovation instead of being ignored. Um, this is something, there are a lot of really great thinkers here, uh, and I, I think the, the priorities are really to think strategically going forward about how we can creatively foster more collaboration among agencies and, and, and funding up funding options and using and leveraging these alternative data sources um, to supplement up, um, with other information. So if you're designing a survey with this information already in mind, how would this be completely different than saying, starting with a blank piece of paper and saying, oh, what, what is all the information I'd like to have? So change in perspective.